Are you looking to build some family reading habits? Let's dig into each one of those letters and what they mean with my signature system of building reading habits at home. Those of you who don't know me, my name is Kim Cree. I am a former reading specialist, mom of four, former elementary school teacher, and I am obsessed with all things reading. So let's dive right in and figure out how to get your kids reading more and maybe put down those screens every once in a while. Let's start with the word habits. Stick with me here. Each letter of the word habits is going to stand for something else. So the H is going to stand for heart. And we want our kids to love reading. Let's pick books with heart. So what does that mean? I want you to think about when you were little, some of the books that you most enjoyed. You might not remember a title, but you probably remember a feeling, a feeling of being safe, being bonding with your parents, of being around your grandparents, of snuggling up, of listening to a favorite teacher read aloud. So think about what was important when you were younger as a child, either being read to or reading on your own, but what made it special? How can we bring some heart into our reading at home? Quick way to up your H or your heart in the word habits is really to switch up where you're reading. If you're always snuggling in bed, maybe climb under the dining room table and make a reading for it, or maybe snuggle up under a flashlight, under a blanket, or maybe read outside if it's warm. But just think about what you loved as a child when you were reading and maybe share that with your kids and ask them, what could make reading more fun? How could you bring a little heart into your home? Moving right along to the A in habits, we're gonna give our kids autonomy. So we are gonna let them pick their own books. And I understand because one of my least favorite books to read is Goodnight Moon. And do you know what my two-year-old's favorite book to read is? You guessed it, Good Night Moon. I mean, there were some nights where I might have hidden that book, but for the most part, I let them pick and they bring me the books that they want to read. I might strongly encourage some different books, but rereading is perfectly fine. It's developmentally appropriate, especially for littles. They're going to have their favorite books and that's okay, but give your kids the autonomy to pick their own books. So if they have autonomy, they're building some independence, they're making their own decisions, they're able to pick their books. Again, you can offer suggestions and when you go to the library, maybe you get to pick a couple of books and add to your to be read pile. But for the most part, we want our kids to have the autonomy to make those decisions and pick what books that they think that they will enjoy. That will help making that reading habit just so much easier when they're the ones picking their own books. So the B in habits is actually gonna stand for bonding and books bonding with books. And this kind of goes hand in hand with that autonomy one. So hear me out. You're going to build a reading habit. You need to have access to lots of books. That does not mean you need to be a book hoarder like myself. Um, you do need to switch out your books. So the library is a super easy way to do that. You can have book swaps with your friends. There's different ways to get books into your kids' hands. They should have a library at their school. They might have um, scholastic book fairs, book sales, lots of different ways to get books into your child's hands. But also I want you to think of this B as bonding. So especially for littles, you're gonna be reading books and you're gonna be bonding over those books. So maybe you do get to pick out a book that looks interesting at the library. Um, that's developmentally appropriate for your child as well, but you read aloud your book and talk about what made it special for you. So lots of different ways to get books into your child's hands and just think of it as a bonding experience. So like I said, the B is doing double work here. I in habits is going to stand for incentivize. Hear me out, I'm not telling you to go to the dollar store and buy gifts to incentivize your kids. That's not what I mean here. Although sometimes if you have a very reluctant reader, sometimes you do what you have to do. Incentivizing, especially for littles, can just be making a paper chain where you're pulling a chain link off every time that you read a book about animals and when you get to the end, you are going to the zoo. Or you're gonna read a springtime book every day of March until the first day of spring and then you're gonna go on a nature walk. Those are the types of incentivizing I mean here, but sometimes we do need a little push to read, um, whether you keep a list on an app or if you keep a list, uh, running list on a piece of paper. It's just good to kind of track what you're reading. And again, this is not what I'm saying for preschoolers. I know 
As a teacher and a mom, I used to despise reading logs. I feel like we've moved away from that a little bit, but I do understand the accountability piece of that. So incentivizing just means different ways to maybe expand those books that they're reading, right? <clears throat> How can we get different topics, different ideas, different things in front of our kids and encourage them to read? So the I is for incentivize. And like I said, doesn't necessarily mean gifts. It could just mean like you're going out for ice cream once you finish this series. Or if there's a favorite snack, like when you read The Very Hungry Caterpillar, you can pick from a ton of different snacks after you read that book as just a way of incentivizing, as encouraging our kids to read. Moving right along to T. The T in habit is going to stand for time. You have to make time to read. It's as simple as that. Um, and I know it can also be as difficult as that, right? Because we don't have time. That's the one thing we're running out of. Um, we never have enough of, and I get it. I hear you. I have four kids. They're all going in opposite directions. 100% I understand. So the way I make time for reading is I have a book for both older boys that we're reading on Audible in the car on the way to soccer practice. I also have a book that I'm just reading with my fifth grader. He really wanted to read Wonder listen to it on Audible. So that's what we do on our way to swim practice, right? I make time for my five-year-old because she is home from preschool a little bit earlier than the rest of my kids. So we make time during quiet time. We snuggle. She reads books. I read books to her. I always have time with my two-year-old throughout the day. Definitely before nap, we always read lots of books. But honestly, sometimes he's just in the mood for a snuggly morning and we read a lot of books. Sometimes he has a little basket of books in the car and he flips through them there. So time looks different based on your ages. I totally understand that. But um, on the go, I would definitely encourage audiobooks. To find the time, maybe you have a timer go off on your phone where everyone in your family takes out a book. If you have older kids, that might work. Maybe you have reading buddy time. I like to pair up my 11 year old with my two year old. And you know, it just depends on your family dynamics. You don't always have to be the reading buddy is kind of what I'm trying to show you here, but you do have to either schedule the time or make the time and set the example. My husband is not a reader and my kids are very quick to point that out. So, you know, we have um, sports magazines or different factual books that he's reading um, while we do family reading time or just kind of pairing up with one of my kids to read with them. So. Even if reading is not your jam, if you want to build reading habit in your home, you're going to either have to fake it till you make it or set aside the time, listen to those audiobooks, um, and give them some independent reading time on their own. Think about yourself as an adult. Don't you love going to book club, drinking some tea or some wine, talking to your friends? Make it social for your kids. You know, grab some popsicles, get some ice cream, make it a party, and just talk about the book that they're all reading. It really doesn't have to be complicated um, or just honestly ask them questions about their book. Even if you're not reading the same book, you can just be like, oh, what's going on? What's your favorite part? How do you think it's going to end? Those are some great questions that are kind of open-ended that you can just listen in and then ask some clarifying questions as they're explaining their book to you. So, Making it social is going to make those reading habits really stick. Are you ready to build a reading habit? I want you to drop in the comments your favorite letter. It was it H for heart, A for autonomy, B for books or bonding, I for incentivize, T for time, or S for social. So we are building those reading habits, starting with our littles. So they're going to grow up to be lifelong readers. So I can't wait to hear all about your reading habits that you're going to build in your home. If you want even more tips on how to swap screens for stories, have them put down those screens and pick up a book, you can grab my free guide right here in the description of this video. Happy reading!